we've been saying for some time that the the risk to uh, the economy is more on the side of deflation than inflation. So, uh, as COVID took, uh, you know, created all the um, uh, destruction that it did, and and supply chains really being thrown off, we've been through a period here of inflation, uh, which uh, I think investors are baking into the cake. That's the that's the underlying assumption out there that we're in an inflationary period and that it was turbocharged uh, by the supply chain disruptions uh, that occurred during the coronavirus. And of course, they will they will be focused on monetary policy when they say that. Um, uh, I am a student of economic history and I've lived quite a bit of it myself. So seen a lot of markets and started in the business during the seventies. I was in college when inflation was raging. Uh, so I, I know what that is. And uh, I truly believe we are not going back there and that anyone uh, planning uh, for it is probably going to be making some mistakes. Uh, so the three sources of deflation that we see um, to go into a little more detail, uh, on the innovation side, technologically enabled innovation, we are in a period today like we have never been, never. I mean, you have to go back to telephone, electricity, and automobile to see three major technologically enabled sources of innovation evolving at the same time. Today, we have five, five platforms, uh, DNA sequencing, robotics, uh, energy storage, artificial intelligence, and blockchain technology, all of which are deflationary, and not just by a little bit either. Jeff Gundlach and ha Howard Marks, and I think Stan Druckenmiller and um, Ray Dalio, all of them, uh, I think, have been very, very concerned about um, a, a deflationary bust. And uh, we agree with them uh, in this respect. Uh, we think it's going to be balanced by uh, a deflationary boom. So that's where we differ. But where we agree is that uh, there are companies who thought the world would never change and uh, have been, uh, again, catering uh, to short-term shareholders who wanted that extra penny or two in earnings and so got it uh, uh, by having the companies leverage up and take more debt and shrink the number of shares. Uh, uh, and they've also been um, focused on dividends. Uh, they are probably saddled with uh, products and services that will become obsolete because of the record-breaking amount of innovation taking place today. And in order to service their debt, they are going to have to cut prices uh, and move those uh those goods and services that are on their way out anyway. Uh, so I, I am concerned about that. And I think there's going to be a lot of confusion around it as well. Um, uh, so I, 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 that's why we keep our eye on the innovation ball uh, because that is going to balance uh, these issues out to, to a great extent. But what it will also mean is that the traditional GDP numbers we're going to be seeing are going to be very low. And so, and, and growth will seem very scarce. Um, I think it will proliferate over time and that some of the companies uh, that, that, that we own, the stocks we own, uh, they're not in any index out there. So a lot of public market uh, uh, investors aren't exposed to them, uh, but we think there are going to be a lot more of those opportunities going forward. There will be a lot of job displacement. There will be, no question about it. In fact, when we started our company in 2014, uh, Oxford University had just put out a piece uh, which said, and it was about the United States, uh, that said 47% of all uh, jobs in the United States would be lost to automation and artificial intelligence by 2035. And they left it there. Hair on fire, headlines screaming, a lot of fear about automation. We, we got the question every meeting. And what they had neglected to do, which we did, was finish the story. So with automation and artificial intelligence, 
um, productivity is going to go up dramatically. We think more than it ever has, um, certainly in modern times. And uh, with productivity increases uh, comes more wealth creation and more GDP creation. Uh, and according to our estimates, in the year 2035, uh, because of automation and artificial intelligence, we believe that GDP here in the United States will not be 28 trillion, which would be a if you drew the growth linear growth, that's where it would be, uh, but instead will be $40 trillion. And it is our job uh, focused only on innovation to figure out where that extra $12 trillion is going to come from. And then to educate and orient our investors, of course, but also parents and grandparents, you know, how, where, how should you educate your children? You know, how should you steer them so that they are on the right side of change? Because there are going to be so many exciting opportunities.